Hi everyone, if you enjoy what I do, then I think you'd enjoy my short collection of short stories, available now on Amazon. Please make sure to subscribe and consider becoming a Patreon. Enjoy the video! On a silent, deserted beach just outside Pelican Town, it is said that when it rains, a lone old mariner can be seen amongst the tide pools. Tales tell that he simply stares out of the sea, clutching an ornate pendant, and that just as quickly as the weather changes, he is gone once more, leaving only a mystery that is swiftly forgotten. His story though, may be one of survival, love, and ultimately heartbreak, as he now waits for the day that his faith will be rewarded, and he can finally let the past go. By the lizards long ago, however, all the terrain can be extremely dangerous. Right, time to die. Setting sail on a journey like any other, the fateful ship would depart from Stardew Valley, crewed by families seeking a new life, separated lovers destined never to see each other again, and explorers seeking to discover a new world. Then there was the crew, those who had made trips like this any number of times, and had fallen into complacency, believing that their course was safe, and that this voyage would be no different. The vessel was barely a few days out of port, when a great fog descended over their passage, but believing their path to be clear, and their course to be true, the captain ordered that they continue on at full speed. What he did not realise though, was that they had drifted towards the Fern Islands, and were passing dangerously close to the volcanic Ginger Island, a place that harboured an ancient and forgotten secret. It was not until the rain began lashing down, that the captain realised his error, and tried to veer the ship away from the isle, only to be met with a fell melody in the storm, and a great tempest that would engulf the ship, and every last soul on board. When the skies finally cleared, all that remained of the ship was a broken hull discarded in the shallows, surrounded by flotsam, and the half-submerged visages of its crew. There had been but only a few survivors, each spluttering onto the shore, convinced that they were the only ones, and now sentenced to eke out their lives stranded on a lush, but remote and desolate spit of sand. The most unlikely of survivors, however, was amongst the bodies floating alongside of the ship, one of the ship's deckhands. This mariner would have appeared no different to anyone observed in the scene, and yet from below, some Something chose him and him alone, reaching up and dragging him beneath the waves. In what he thought to be a dream of death, the mariner imagined a beautiful creature pulling him into the depths, past reef and wreck, tending to him and watching him slumber. Never once did they surface into the open air, and yet the mariner never experienced a sensation of drowning, or even the urge to breathe. It was not until he awoke within a damp cave, and found that same creature silently watching over him, that he realised it had all been real. Her hair was an unnatural shade of blue, and rather than legs, she possessed a vibrant green fish tail. But despite this, just as in his dream, she was indeed beautiful. He knew what this being was though. Hearing tales of her kind from other mariners, a siren whose song could lure the strongest of whales to their demise, a being the common folk called a mermaid. And yet this one spoke not a word, having attended to his wounds and nursing him back to health. Despite his apparent recovery, however, he was far from well enough to rejoin the world, and the mermaid would continue to care for him, a trust slowly growing between the two of them, as they learned to communicate without words. In time for would grow well enough to venture out of the cave, and it was now that he discovered what had kept him alive when he should really have died in the shipwreck. The mermaid had made him, at least partially, like her, capable of breathing water, but having to remain near it at all times. To his surprise, he was not angered by this. After all, it had saved his life, and besides, he felt at home here in a way he never had on the surface. Even after he had fully healed and could have left to forge a new path, he chose to stay, having fallen in love with the mermaid and deciding to spend the rest of his life with her beneath the sea. In reciprocation, she would present him with an ornate blue shell pendant, a symbol amongst her people of union, and he would readily accept, knowing of this gesture, for the people of Stardew Valley had much the same tradition, apparently having adopted it from the mermaids at some point in time. From then, for years after, it would have seemed that the tale of the mariner was at an end, if it had not been for an act of ultimate trust. For at last, the mermaid would not only speak to him, but sing. Her voice was as rich and melodic as he had dreamt, but in that moment he was taken back to the day all of this started, and that voice in the storm. It had been her. It would transpire that the mermaids held a great secret, something on the island above, that they would do anything to protect. In the case of the mariner's ship, she had used the power of her voice to conjure up a storm to deter them from getting any closer, but in the captain's overconfidence, they had steered directly into it and to their doom. Never having meant to wreck the ship, and out of guilt for what she had done, the mermaid searched for survivors in the water, coming upon the mariner and hoping to save him as penance. Vowing to never speak again, lest she hurt anyone else, the mermaid never expected to fall in love 
love with the Mariner, so kept her secret, only revealing the truth when she felt he might be able to forgive her. Ultimately, some wounds would never heal for the Mariner though, and even though he knew he would always love her, he couldn't bring himself to forgive her, not for the suffering she had caused, and decided to leave, travelling back to Stardew Valley. He was still part Merman though, and would never be able to live a life on the surface. Still, when it rained, he would venture onto the beach and pretend he was part of a community he had left so long ago, at the same time lamenting the life and love he could no longer allow himself to have. Maybe one day someone would happen upon him, someone with enough love in their hearts to make their relationship work where he could not, someone worthy of the mermaid's pendant he treasured still. Hi everyone, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked what you saw, then I think you'd like my short collection of short stories. Please consider liking the video, subscribing, sharing it with all your friends, and if you want to support me that bit more, become a Patreon. Links are all down in the description. I hope you all have a great day, and I will see you next time.